If you look at my YouTube comments, a lot of people are saying we need USDC on chain right now, or there's no point of trading on the Cardano ecosystem. And you know, I kind of agree with that. But to get USDC or other stablecoins, USDT, whatever it is on chain, uh, technically there may be some requirements that we need to meet. And this is through conversations that I've heard and uh, what I've read on Twitter or X, whatever it's called these days. And one of them is the ability to freeze assets that's being worked on with SIP113. But then also companies like Circle do look at the amount of trading volume that there is for stable coins on that ecosystem already. And at the moment, there isn't much USDC in terms of wrapped USDC or synthetic USDC on chain itself. So we need to up our game here as a community and start moving some assets over from other chains, whatever it is, we need to talk about it. We need to tell people how to do it and all that so that people, if they're interested, they can start moving USDC over to Cardano and start trading that way, getting some of those gains, putting it into stable swap pools, whatever it is. And in this video, I'll be taking you through the entire process of moving USDC. And in this case, I'll be doing it from Arbitrum over to the Cardano ecosystem. So if you're interested in moving some stablecoin assets from somewhere else over to Cardano, this is the video for you. Let's get into it. Now, this all came about from this particular uh, post from Liam here on uh, part of the OneChain team. And he goes through how to move assets from Arbitrum over to Cardano itself. And th this is, you can replace Arbitrum for any other chain that uh, one chain connect to. And you can see down here, let me get to it here. This is all the different routes that you can move your assets from. Uh, Arbitrum, Avalanche, ASTAR, uh, BNB Chain, Bitcoin, Celo, Ethereum, Optimism, Polygon, Tron, and uh, backwards from one chain as well. You can see all the different assets that are available and we can move them with ease through the bridge. So let's go through this process. Now I had to uh, start off on the Arbitrum side of things and I had to uh, so all my assets, I had assets over on BNB chain. So I had to use the seller bridge, move it over to Arbitrum. So now I've got this wrapped seller USDC and now I had to uh, swap it for um, the USDC implementation on Arbitrum. So I've already done that with my wallet here and you can see on the USDC, I've got 36 uh, USDC on the Arbitrum chain. Now I had to swap that from USDC E to USDC because the one chain bridge only supports that native implementation of USDC by circle. So I had to have that asset. So I had to swap it in that case. So here we got the Arbitrum as my uh, from chain and the two chain I've got Cardano and I'm selecting the asset USDC. So that all looks well and good. Now here I have to put in my destination wallet. So with other EVM chains, if you connect your MetaMask wallet or whatever wallet you're using, it will automatically populate it because it uses the same address. In this case, totally different wallet, totally different ecosystem. I have to get my wallet address and paste it in there. Now I'm using NAMI wallet. NAMI wallet's my uh, wallet of choice. It's quite simple, lightweight, and easy to use for things like this. So I'll just get my receiving address and paste it here. So there we go. And everything else looks good. So I've hit max. So the maximum amount that I can move through is 36 USD here, 36.7. So now I hit next and I'll continue this process. Yep, everything there looks good. Let's confirm. From Arbitrum to Cardano, those addresses look okay to me. And it will take 15 minutes approximately to get this uh, asset bridged over to Cardano. So let's confirm that and get started. So MetaMask is asking for the sending cap request. Let me just approve that. Now I just need to uh, approve the transfer transaction and all that looks good. The fee is nice and low because we are on Arbitrum. Let me confirm and there it goes. So that's now starting the bridging process. So now this is ticking over. What's happening is on the Arbitrum side, the USDC is being locked into a smart contract. On the Cardano side, the USDC is being minted or it's actually being pre-minted and now is going to be released from that smart contract and added to my Cardano wallet. So that all has to happen in the background and we'll see that kick in very soon. So I'm gonna give this a little bit of time. I'm gonna pause it right here. And when that's transferred in, we'll continue this process. 
and success. There we go. So I, I clicked on the history there to have a look at that come through. And that didn't take 15 minutes. That took about maybe two or three minutes to bridge over to the Cardano ecosystem. So I'm pretty excited that it was a lot quicker than I thought it would be. Let me just check my wallet here and see if that has appeared. And indeed it has. So there it is right there. I've got my 36.7 USDC ready to go to do something on the Cardano side. So what can you do at the moment? And you do have a few options. Of course, you can always provide liquidity to a particular farm. There aren't too many farms at the moment. And this is a stable swap farm. And I do like the stable swap ones because uh, the theory here is that impairment loss should be negligible or extremely low because you have two assets that are equal in value. So if you have more of one than the other, it's okay because they're both worth the same amount. Unlike if you had ADA and USD, the value of ADA may go up. Uh, USD should always remain the same, uh, but may go uh, ADA may go up and down in value and uh, the amount of um, tokens that you have in the, your LP would also vary and hence you suffer from impermanent loss. So this is a nice way of getting into uh, the liquidity pools, providing uh, some liquidity and earning some farming rewards. You can see here at the moment that APR is at 19%, so just under 20% there. So that's a decent amount of APR and it comes in the, uh, the rewards do come in the form of min tokens and ADA itself. So that's quite nice. So you get 13.89%. Uh, uh, percent APR in min and the 5.27 in ADA. So not quite stable assets in return, but you do get something that you can uh, potentially sell for more stable assets over time. Now, before I provide any liquidity to that pool, I also need the other token, in this case, Jed. So I'm going to swap a little bit of my USDC here. So I'm going to go three USDC to three, uh, just over, just a little bit more. Okay. So I've got a little bit of a uh, Jed there in this particular swap. I'm using MinSwap stable swap pools here, and this will give me the best price possible. So I'm going to click on swap and I just need to sign that transaction. And there we go. So now I have a little bit of extra Jed, a little bit of USDC all in my wallet. And now I can provide liquidity to this stable swap pool. Now, when you're swapping, please ensure that you are using that stable swap uh, that they have on the decks to get that best price and you'll be able to provide liquidity uh, right after. So now I'll click on earn and farming. I'll just type in USDC to get that particular pool up again. So let's go through and stake that LP. So I'll need to add liquidity. So now I have a bit of USDC here. So I'm just going to use the same, uh, the correct ratios here. There we go. So three USDC, a little bit more Jed there. So it's not quite uh, exact values. And I'm going to click on add liquidity. So this is stable swap liquidity. Yep, I'm all in the right spot here. Let's click on add liquidity and start this process. And I've just signed the transaction and away we go. So now that is creating the LP tokens and I'll be able to stake that directly to the LP. Uh, I think it actually does that all in one step. I'll just check in one second and it looks like it's complete. Great. So now that I have all of those LP tokens, I can now click on stake, choose the amount that I want to lock in. In this case, 100%. Continue the process here and my wallet will pop up. So I just need to sign this transaction. So now I've successfully locked in those LP tokens and earning those farming rewards from this particular pool. So let's recap exactly what I've gone through here. So I've moved my wrapped uh, USDC E, which I use Celebridge from BNB chain, moved it over to Arbitrum, swapped that for native USDC, then used the one chain bridge to move that over to the Cardano ecosystem and then added uh, some liquidity over to MinSwap in their stable swap liquidity pool so I can earn some extra farming rewards out of there. And that nice 19% uh, APR is quite nice. So I will be harvesting that uh, quite regularly so that I can convert it into more stable coins and then uh, compound my rewards that way. So it's a really nice, interesting DeFi strategy that you can do. So if you have any USDC or stable coins on other ecosystems that you want to move over, you can use that one chain bridge and start this process as well. 
Of course, you can always move it over to the Cardano ecosystem, swap it out for some other stable coins, such as JED and USDM as well. So we have a lot of options here at the moment, but the important thing is that we start moving that liquidity over. I know we are trying to look for the uh, USDC solution, that one from Circle, that particular implementation, but we have to start somewhere as an ecosystem and I highly encourage people to start looking into it. Maybe you don't like the idea of bridges. There are those risks of hacks and all that. Uh, we've seen Nomad Bridge fall over and that really impacted the Cardano ecosystem in the early days of DeFi. But One Chain Bridge has a long history. They've been up and running for over six years now and are, is a fully decent centralized bridge. If you want to learn more about it, I've done interviews with Temujin and he's gone through and talked about the bridge and how they're involved in the Kanani ecosystem. I also do have more interviews coming up with the team there from OneChain to talk about what else they're doing in terms of interoperability and bringing that to the Kanani ecosystem too. So make sure you hit that like button, hit subscribe, click on the notification bell and you'll hear a lot more things about USDC, bridging assets over and using the Cardano ecosystem to its fullest potential. I'll see you in the next video.